not international this time, and then repost the picture with the hashtag Fuck today. Tomorrow comes movies. Hello, everybody. This is actor musician Scott Schiaffo, and you're listening to Tomorrow Comes Movies. Welcome back to another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies. We are the podcast that talks beyond movies, including video games, not music, comics, television, Star Wars, pop culture, Funko, anime, and much more. As always, your hosts are the Patrick and Carissa. Chucky is the Joker's best buddy. Episode 93. So what is going on? So we officially have stickers and buns. Stickers and buttons. Now, if you want some, you have to reach out to us on social media. They're free. Or email tocmovies at gmail.com. Yes, they are free. Yes, I have to All bring it up. All you have to do, you don't have to pay us. All you gotta Yet. do is, is well, kidding. yeah, what we mean, these are just like sample batches we're playing around with. It's it. promo. Uh, eventually, we'll end up selling some. Um, but these are just sample ones just to try out. They're free. You do not have to pay for them. It's because somebody hit me up and was like, if they're free, I'll take one. As if it, that makes us feel fantastic to know <laughs> that you won't pay to support But it was me. somebody who's never really tuned into us. It's just somebody on Instagram. Yes. So all you have to do is you can send us an email with your information or you can send us a DM through social medias and just let us know the name and where you want us to send it to. You know, what's really weird is a lot. Some people did not provide their real name. <laughs> that's fine. They don't have to. Yeah, but it's so strange though. What if like the mail delivery guy's like, that's not that person and they can't find the address? Like, that's why having the name can help. I went to the post office and one of the addresses I sent out, they could not find it. To the point where I'm like, Well, hold on here, so like I'm about to hit the person up and then the mail guy's like, Oh no, no, I go I guess I found it now and I'm like, Okay, so you know, you just gotta be careful. Yeah. So I don't want these buttons getting in the wrong hands. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to have to send any more out. And, you know, for us, you know, a lot of people are like, can I just take a sticker? We just send you a complimentary, like, two stickers, two buns, whatever you want to do with it. Just because I feel like if we're going to go to that extreme length of sending it to you, I have to send it in a little bubble mailer. It's mm-hmm. going to cost me a, a decent amount. I don't want to just send you one sticker for what? Yeah. You know, so I want to send you enough for if you want to put your sticker somewhere and then have an extra one or if you want to give it to somebody. You know, people like, I know it's people also, whether or not they listen to us or check out our, they our like YouTube. They like stickers. Yeah, they like stickers and, and they like buttons. buttons. Yeah, I, I just got to have it. So I'm like, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing either. No, I mean, it's free so, promo in a, in a sense. But uh, yeah, this is just the beginning as we're we're testing different items. We like, you We're know, testing different, also different... Um, different vendors of, of who do we like what from what quality and and um you got these from sticker mule right? sticker mule i like them a i lot. like sticker yeah, i don't know if we're gonna move on i really like them um they also have like custom tape so when we tape packages we send them out um we have for, labels now too right we have labels now i mean so i mean not bad i, I like it sticker mule yeah so yeah we'll be making more and we'll be eventually giving them out at conventions if you see us and uh you know, we're we're slowly gathering, you know, I guess people have asked us for t-shirts, you know, we're working on that, and hats. Those are the two things I think people, someone asked me if if, they, if we're going to make hats, and I'm like. Who asked you? Well, I'll tell you off the mic. I don't need to, like, put them on blast, but yeah, a lot of people have mentioned that they would take a hat as well. She's, like, totally bewildered that anybody wants to rock our gear. Some people want to. I'm not going to get trucker hats. They're going to be, like, either snapback. I probably snapbacks, because I feel like fitted. That's just too much. That's going to cost us too much money. And we're going to have somebody who doesn't have a big head that's not going to buy our merchandise. But uh, yeah, definitely just hit us up on social media or email tocmovies at gmail.com. And you get free stickers and buns. Also, we got a giveaway going on right now on Instagram. You can win a signed Spider Noir that we recently got at Amazing Comic Con by the co creator of Spider Noir, Fabrice uh, Spolotsky. Mm-hmm. I think that's how you say it. And. It's pretty simple, this this Instagram giveaway. All you got to do is follow us. got to like the post. Now, there's a few of them because we've reposted it. You got to repost the picture. You gotta, wait, you're going to order. You have to tag three friends. Oh, whoops. And then you have to repost. So let's go through it again. So follow us, number one. Number two, you got to like the post. Number three, you got to tag three friends. Even though I caught a guy doing six friends. And... He didn't read the rules clearly because it's only for people in the U.S. right now. Not international this time. And then repost the picture with the hashtag 
TOC movies Spire Nor sign Spire Nor giveaway. It's on our Instagram, which is and anybody can enter this contest. Yes, as long as you're in the United States of America. Yes. So yeah, so just go to our you know just at TOC movies and you can see all the details there. Yeah, Kristen has to say this because I feel like there's some people we know who did not enter this giveaway, and I'm like, you can enter it if you want. Like, we're not going to be, like, specifically, like, trying to make sure you win, but you're welcome to join it. It's a really cool pop. Like, it is. Like, it's, it's in a paint pen, which, you know, if you know anything about our, you know, con coverage, we're real into the paint pens right now. So, definitely get on this giveaway because we got another one coming up, which is, I think, is going to be huge. This is going to be bigger than what we're giving out right now. Yeah. And we're going to do more sign giveaways. I think people like the sign giveaways. So, we'll see how it goes. So, TLC Movies, look at the post, enter... May the odds be ever in your favor now that Hunger Games, as we said on the last episode, might be coming back. So oh you don't have to Hunger Games for this pop. Like <laughs> that'd be awesome. It's not that hot of a pop. <laughs> you either have to. Oh, there's, so there's a pop that's hot enough for for people to Hunger Games. Uh, maybe. Oh, I, maybe that 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 headless uh, Nick, Ned Stark. Oh, yeah, that one's like twelve oh. grand. No, it's that it's that clock orange one. That oh the yeah, dark. what is that go a for? A like, clockwork orange. Yeah. Like like what thirteen grand or something like that. Yeah, crazy. There you go. And that could be a freaking car. Yeah. And I would not sell it. Would no. you sell it? No. No way. Once you obtain it, you're never going to get Unless it Unless I like, picked up like gambling and I was like a gambling Or like a mystery or box. I don't even think they could make a mystery box that would justify that price. I don't know. And of course, we have a new con to announce. This we is do. very exciting. So early in our con days, we hit the big time, we felt. And we're hitting it again. Los Angeles Comic Con. When we hit this, we got picked up as press. Chris and I were like, we are big. <laughs> like, it was incredible, considering that we only started our, our con coverage within since, like, that June of, of last year. Yeah. So, we are returning October 11th, 12th, and 13th at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Los Angeles Comic Con. We're so excited to be coming back. We're going to be covering it. It's going to be pretty epic. We'll have probably more buns. I think we're going to do all kinds of different things there, because it's going to be more of a in our backyard. We don't have to fly, which is nice. It's kind of it's it's kind of I'm excited. I just want you to know I'm I'm really jacked up to be going back to LA. Cuz I always w- worry that some cons not going to take us back. But Chris is like, "Now nah, they'll take us. Once you're in, it's like San Diego. You're you're good." Usually. As usually. long as you do good coverage, which we did a lot of coverage. Yeah. DMC, Bonnie Aarons. And now we have Ming like Chen. the, wa- the ugh, now we have the right equipment. So it's like, don't have to worry about getting an interview with somebody and then you realize, oh, Funko, I didn't plug in the mic correctly or, oh, no, we have no audio. Yeah, exactly. You know, now we have a lot better gear. We have, and we also have different colored shirts. We'll probably have different colored shirts as we get down there. So very excited to be going, but you guys should be going as well because their media guest lineup is, it's, it's pretty special so far, especially if you're a fan of one of the greatest TV series of all time, The Office. Mm-hmm. Now, The Office is doing quite the reunion, if I might add, considering that Chris and I have only met one person from The Office. Yes. And he actually is going to be part of this reunion. So, they are bringing out Oscar Nunez, mm-hmm. Oscar, Leslie David Baker, mm-hmm. Stanley, Cree Brand, Creed, Kate Flannery, mm-hmm. Meredith, and Phyllis Smith. Phyllis. Yes. So, our, right there, I'm already sold. Like, we met Leslie David Baker. He had some delicious pretzels. Chocolate covered yeah, pretzels. And we got a really cool interview with him. So, very excited to meet him again. And actually do a photo op which is pretty awesome. Because Chris and I passed in the office. Uh, we saw them at another convention. Did not work out. So, we're like, we got to do it now. I just wish they all had pops. Yeah. Yeah, because none of these characters have pops, which I find strange. But if you're looking for... People in the media side, outside, they got some other guests as well. Ron Perlman, Mm -hmm. Clay from Sons of Anarchy, Hellboy, and it's real hot right now, Umbrella Academy. They're bringing out one of the, where I believe he's either the founder or the creator or the co-creator, Gerard Way, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. You didn't believe it, wrote comics. He's going to be there. And if you're a fan of the X-Men animated series, they're bringing out the director and several voices, including Gambit, Wolverine. Rogue, Beast, and Sinister. That's a lot. That's a lot. And I just realized that there's a few pops coming out. Looks like they're getting signed. I like the X-Men animated series. I think it's really good. You liked it, right? I did, Yeah, yes. it's sometimes I think- Part that, of my childhood. I think sometimes that series sometimes are better than the films. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Except Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past is a really good film. And so Future was the too. animated series. So if you're looking to come join this event, 
come join us. You got to go to ComicConLA.com, and that's where you get your tickets at. And a really cool thing they got going on right now is if you want to plan ahead, which Chris and I sometimes do, mm-hmm. they're already selling uh, pre-purchase available uh, photo ops and autographs for yes. The Office, Ron Perlman. I believe that's it. But if those are what you're coming out for, you got to go get these tickets. So Comic Con LA. So Comic Con LA dot com, and we'll see you there on October 11th through the 13th at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Are you excited or what? I'm so excited. Chris thought LA put on a pretty good show. It was a lot of opportunities for us, including Prospect last year. Yeah, which was a great film. So I'm very excited about that. And we got more con announcements to go, but we could sit here all day and tell you all the cons that we're going to. So. Are you ready to get in this episode? I am ready. ready. Let's talk movies. Moving over to the TV side. <laughs> I know. There's something controversial going on at Netflix, and it oh stars Gayan Matarazzo, who plays Dustin from Stranger Things. I love Dustin from Stranger Things. Now, a lot of controversy with his newest uh, show that he's going to be doing with Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's a hidden prank show, and it's titled Prank Encounters. So basically, I think it goes hand in hand with Stranger Things. I don't know. Now, Gain isn't just hosting this. He's actually executive producing it. Okay. And it's going to be eight episodes. And it's going to premiere later this year. Now, what's that's, wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Exactly. This is what's wrong with it, apparently. And we'll talk about how we feel about okay. it. Okay. But the show, each episode will consist of two people who are tricked into thinking this is their first day at a new job. As they meet one another and they collide, I guess that's what they're saying. The job turns into what they're describing on is full-on nightmares, which is supposed to be hilarious for us. Basically punked now, I would think, right? I mean, doesn't that first thing come to your mind is Ashton Kutcher's punk from MTV? Yeah, but Ashton Kutcher's punk from MTV was a little different because he was punking other celebrities. Yes. Um, Real quick here, what's what's wrong with the picture? Well, you're, you're dealing with someone's job. I don't know if Unemployed that's... Unemployed people. Are, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's funny. It's a little strange, right? That's kind of weird. Who greenlit this project? So what do you think? Two two strangers think it's their first day yeah. at their new job. They collide, basically meeting. Turns out to be a nightmare of a job. And mm. Gay and Monoraz- or Ra- I keep I can't say it right. Dustin from Stranger Things mm-hmm. is hosting this. Uh, yeah, it's like a hard pass for me. I think if they would even sound funny. I'll be honest with you, if they would have taken out the unemployed part, this show could work. That just sounds strange that you're you're basically, like, I'm not as offended as a lot of people. So the, the internet was in uproar about it, saying that they're basically poking fun at the unemployed. Because it's not that fun being unemployed, which is not true. Which is true. You know, unemployed doesn't necessarily mean like you lost your job. Maybe you moved to a new place. But it's hard and, to find a job sometimes. And you need an in- and you need income to survive, kind of thing. Um, but this show doesn't even sound funny. I want to watch this show, but most likely these are paid actors, so you can't get that mad. <laughs> you know wow. what I mean? No faith in Netflix that they got random people. No, because oh, you have to get consent and all that baloney. So it's like no. Well, you can get common people to do consent when well, you pay them a couple hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm you. saying. Yeah. Like it, it I, I think people like like at first I was taking it like I was, I, was, I just got mad thinking like well, that's really messed up. Can you imagine if you're that person? But then again, you're on TV. You have to sign a waiver and stuff for you them to use that footage. People will do it for so, money. So yeah. So in Would the end, it? it's no. It's uh, stupid. I'm. I'm in between. I'm in the upside down in between. <laughs> no, I, that's like a hard pass for me. When I first heard about this show, now I didn't, I didn't, when we, I think we were out of town or something, I had read about this and I didn't really know much about what the show detailed. Yeah. This just sounded horrible because I'm just like, oh, people, some people are excited. They got to get to work because they got to get paid. They got bills to pay. So that yeah, to me. Yeah, goes by. Fun goes by. But I just thought that this sounded like they're preying on the unemployed. Now, I yeah. wasn't an uproar like the community. I just think this is not a show that I think is going to be a hit. It might be, it'll be a hit that people are going to watch it and then they're going to be like, why the hell is this going on? Now, the internet, like I said, went in uproar. So Netflix actually responded. Now, Netflix, I've noticed, does not give two shits about anything. They they tell it how it is. I love their social media because they're, sometimes they're blunt honest. You yeah. Know what I mean? Including, I think one point, I think they, when that Ted Bundy, or the Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy, uh, Ted Bundy. tapes came out. Yeah. And apparently some women, I, from what I read, we're thinking that he was attractive, and Netflix had like tweeted like we have to remind you that he was like a notorious killer, serial killer. Like he's not attractive. What he did was disgusting. I thought that was kind of funny that Netflix would respond to that with with kind of like a blunt 
response, which I mean, is true. I mean, yeah. yeah. So their response, once again, is hilarious. And a spokesman for Netflix uh, issued this statement. The pranks in Prank Encounters are spooky, supernatural, over the top, and everyone had a great time. All participants came in with the expectation this was a one-day hourly gig and everyone got paid for their time. Basically saying... Wait a minute, this sounds weird. Yeah, so I... I spooky? Spooky, yeah. Spooky? So I thought this was a prank show, but Were yes. Were they like, doing like a haunted house thing? I don't know, it's spooky, supernatural, supernatural? Oh, over the no. top, and everyone had a great time. Oh, of course they're going to say well, they that. they got they're paid, gonna, yeah. yeah. Like, so what they're saying is the people that participated in this prank show knew... That they were going into a one day hourly gig and everyone got paid. Yeah, spooky supernatural. What is this? Is this basically yeah. supernatural? Supernatural meets punk? Like, what is going to happen? I, like, I don't are, know. are we tricking the participants into thinking they're killing ghouls and angels and demons? Like, what is that? They're going to call. Yeah. Ghostbusters. It's, it's basically Ghostbusters, except it's just, yeah, it just sounds like Ghostbusters yeah, and Stranger Things meshed weird. in with punk. Yeah, okay. even Stranger Things. So. What do you think about Netflix's statement? They're not they're not backing down. Well, people say they should well, cancel the show. It's only eight episodes. Let's just see what they have. This sounds way different from what you were describing to me of two people coming in for like a first day on a job and they collide and it's like a nightmare situation to where the the quote from the Netflix representative is this is gonna be spooky and supernatural the like, like this sounds like to- two total different shows like is it gonna be like where they're like like there's gonna be like a person that's a maid clean a hotel and like things are gonna start moving and they're gonna think there's like a spirit oh no time? i'm out of here nope mm-hmm. all right so why i'm not fully on board with this one because it's preying on unemployed but they're getting paid so i guess it all works out but the thing about it is i like gain monorazo we met him at fanex he's last so year sweet. uh he's great as dustin on stranger things i think he has a promising career this part is not promising yeah, for the Yeah, I think this was a bright... I would rather uh, see him... I think him, your agent should have passed on yeah, this one. Yeah, I think that your rep should have been like, no, you know, this is not some... Because I think that he has potential. Like, for instance, we were talking about this because we were watching Stranger Things. Yes. That Finn Wolfhard, whoever his reps are, they're doing a great job. Cause oh, he's yeah, in, he's I mean, like everything. Yeah, he's got Stranger Things, he's got It, and then he he's doing The Addams Family. Mm-hmm. So he's doing fine. I feel like the other he's Stranger Things... He's also going to be in the, in the Ghostbusters, yeah, the next he's, Ghostbusters. Boom. I feel that some of the other Stranger Things kids should be doing other things because they're talented. They're very talented. Oh, I yeah. love the. I mean, some of the best uh, young actors and actresses out there. So when I see this and I see Gain's name, I'm getting concerned. Yeah, it's because like, what are you doing? I would rather have heard that you're in a in a in a new movie, maybe a new Netflix movie, maybe a new Netflix series in between Stranger Things, not a prank show, basically tricking unemployed people. And as Chris, I'm I'm not I'm not prude. I'm not one of those people that that's conservative. Like no. I'm I've totally like prank shows. I just find this really strange. Is is Chris is right? This doesn't make sense. Two people are going to be tricked into thinking they're working uh, their first day at the job, and then when they collide, things go night like things get out of control. And then the statement is says, be like clerks. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. And like then clerks when the when the guy goes to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and then they don't realize, and then he asks for like a, a need, like oh like nudie magazine. You don't need toilet paper. <laughs> and then he wants the good toilet paper, he's and like, then uh, give me the one over there. And then you know, and then ball. you don't realize he's in the toilet for like four <laughs> six hours. He's dead, and then your girlfriend goes and bangs him and doesn't know. And then you realize there's a dead guy in the bathroom. Like, she can that, spoil it away. Funny. She can spoil away because it's been 25 years since Clerks. We're in the 25th I, anniversary. I love Clerks. Yeah, actually, if you really want to see a pretty good show about pranks at a job and it's actually based off a true story, go watch Kevin Smith's Clerks. Yeah, I don't really... You meant movie, right? Yes. Excuse me. Okay. Yes. Cool. I, was I like, just show. don't know if this show sounds appealing. Like, I'd be up for a, a punk revival or a new prank show. Any other prank show I'm up for. Just the one with messing with people that are employed doesn't make sense. Like, the Impractical Jokers makes fun of people at work. They work at, like, people's different jobs and mess with people, but they're usually behind the counter working. Yeah. You know, it's not like... Or if they do pretend that they're new, it doesn't matter because they're they're not really working there. That makes sense? Yeah, there's one where they're at, like, a restaurant or oh, something. Yeah. But that's that's a little bit different, I think. Yeah, because if they, if they, you know, they're purposely being paid to mess with people. Yeah. Versus somebody who's like, you know what? I got my job finally. I'm going to come down. But, uh, you know, the Netflix spokesman said that they knew that they were only coming in for one day gig. So, it kind of hard. it's kind of hard to be authentic now when they know what they're coming 
coming in for? Maybe, maybe it's like those, like those, like um, those sign like, spinners, like one day jobs. No, like um, like those uh, caterers. Oh those, yeah, yeah, those, yeah, those waiters. Oh like, yeah, yeah, or like the people that work events and stuff where they yeah. Like, it's a one day. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I just want to. We're trying to justify why they beat this show. Overall, you want to watch this? No, not really. But I know we're gonna have to. Okay, think think there could be a different like premises to like to make this sound a little bit more no. appealing. I don't know. Overall, I guess we'll check it out. I'm up for pranks. I just, I'm kind of curious right now. It's gonna, my curiosity's kind of like, uh, spiking up. Like, what is the spooky supernatural over the top part? You know, cause we know everyone had a great time. Obviously, they got paid. So <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it. Later this year, Prank Encounters, eight episodes hosted oh, man. by Gan Marazaro Dustin from Stranger Things. I can't wait. I got my calendar marked. <laughs> we'll probably not even remember. And we'll nope. be like, hey, this show's coming out now. Just kidding. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to movies, and we're going to review a film that we saw over the weekend. Yeah. Child's Play. Child's Play. And we talked about it on the last episode, we're going to watch it, and we hope it's good. So, very excited to actually talk about it. What did we think about it? So, the basics are, this is a remake of the 1988 horror classic. This stars Mark Hamill, who is taking over the voice of Chucky from veteran voice uh brad dorf i don't think he won the return because obviously it's a remake he wants yes. to stay with the yes. they're working on a tv show on sci-fi about it so this also stars abu plaza from parks and rec mm-hmm. and then brian tyree henry from atlanta he's been in if bill street could talk he's been in a lot of great a lot things, of things. Yeah. white boy rick and also uh the stars young gabriel bateman who plays yes. andy barclay so what this film is about is a young mother mm-hmm. gives her 13-year-old son a mm-hmm. doll for his birthday, but doesn't realize that the doll comes with violent tendencies, Yes, which cause quite the horrific life for them. Yes. As always with our reviews, it is spoiler-free section, spoiler section, final thoughts, and rating. So, Krissa, Child's Play, take it away. Why do I have to always go first? I'm just curious what you think. So okay. I, yeah. Okay. So you you take my ideas and oh she no. didn't say this I'm gonna say this instead. If you've listened to this podcast, you know it's a running gag that you do not interrupt Carissa. Shop. So I always let her go first so she doesn't accidentally forget some. That's so messed up. Okay. So child's play. So I went in thinking this movie was gonna be garbage. Like, really? Yes. I I did not. I you did, did not mention that to me. I did not like the trailers. Um, I don't like remakes. Typically, I don't think they're very good. Who um, likes remakes? Let's be honest. Who actually sits there and goes, I can't wait for a remake? I'm actually kind of excited for West Side Story. Uh, well documented. We've talked about it. I think you said on the last episode about remakes. Like, first I was nervous, then I accepted it. And I'm like, I'm okay now. Okay. Um, but normally don't like remakes. Normally, okay. no, no. And yeah, so, I'm not a big fan of them either. Well, I, I think the thing for, for Chucky, I think Chucky's played out. I think we've have too many Chuckies. Yeah, but this yeah. is a remake, so the, you it, know that universe. It is doesn't gone. matter. It's enough. Like no more, just no more. So this movie, I went in with low expectations, just because I knew we had to watch it because we wanted to review it. But I wasn't like ecstatic for it. I was like, wow. I wasn't like, I need to see this movie kind of thing. Mark Hamill was Chucky. I was all in. No, fasten the seatbelt. I was like, let's go. I wasn't. I was actually worried for Mark Hamill for this movie. <laughs> I was like, oh god, <laughs> like Star Wars is ending for you. Do this. Is what you're gonna be doing now? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, he's a great voice actor. You know, like he's so, a great actor overall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but sometimes you forget he's a voice actor too. Oh, I mean, his Joker on the Batman anime series is incredible. And so, I went in with this movie with some hesitations. I came out okay. All right, that was I quite the pause. I didn't hate it. Well, I was going to say surprised. Actually, yeah, I lied. I'm going to say it. I came out surprised. I actually enjoyed it to a certain extent. So did I. Um, It definitely, it definitely exceeded my expectations. I like the modern twist on the storyline yes the beginning was a little rough for me i didn't think it was gonna i think it was gonna go very well <laughs> yeah, like, oh god i agree with you on that one um but it definitely picked up in the second and third act and um the young boy who plays andy gabriel bateman is very good yes the only thing i had a hard time with the concept is seeing aubrey plaza as a mom yeah, because I kept thinking that her Cause husband she, was. Because um, she's she's relatively Andy. young. <laughs> Andy's wife. 
stop it, Patrick. Um, but overall, Burn overall, Apple. this like I said, this movie exceeded my expectations. I mean, I went in with low, so it doesn't say that much. But it was actually very interesting. It was a different interpretation of this story. Again, with the modern twist. I can tell you guys in the spoiler section of why it, it kind of like, huh, huh, okay. Um, it wasn't as spooky as like the old Chucky movies, but it it still kept suspense. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple of good jump scares. But as a child watching Chucky, I was terrified of Chucky. Is it still terrifying as a as a grown person? Um no yes in the modern take yes yes both actually well, yeah I mean, both i mean the old one still scares me more and i can I, I can tell you why in a spoiler part of it but it was actually not bad i actually enjoyed it i walked out saying huh that was interesting hmm. yeah. all right so for me like chris at the beginning i'm like I'm looking over. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> we're in uh, we're in rough waters now. Like, is this gonna? Are we gonna be able to sail through this? Because this looks like a storm of crap happening. And then it got better. So overall, I found this film to be what I term, uh, well, the term guilty pleasure. I feel like down the road, this is a guilty pleasure film. Meaning, I actually enjoyed it. Popcorn flick. I actually had a good time with it. It's still not better than the original. No. I will say that. But Mark Hamill, uh, you know, his interpretation of Chucky loved it. I think it's interesting. You know, Mark Hamill, I think, did his own kind of spin on it. And I feel like they did a good job of separating the remake from the classic. I think the remake did a good job of, of twisting different things. But then there's there's a particular part which I found just ridiculous to the point where I'm like, this is this is poorly executed for why we're remaking this. That's what I'll say. Um, also, I did like the animatronic CGI balance. Mm-hmm. I was worried that they were going to CGI Chucky throughout this whole thing, but no, they did not. And also the new look of Chucky was up for it. It was different. And it that's took what, a lot to adjust. Yeah, I like that they tried to make it different by trying to separate themselves with just the same IP, obviously, you know, the premise, but the look freaked me out. You know, I, I don't think this is a spoiler around right? the look because I think they showed it in the... Um, I think the look actually made it creepier are we allowed to say is this would that be spoiler to talk about the look or should i just wait let's wait okay so i like the look i like mark hamill aubrey plaza i thought did a pretty good job with mostly a dramatic performance but kind of utilizing her her comedic uh her comedic chops in certain parts uh the young kid gabriel bateman who played andy actually was really good like to the point where there's a particular thing i i all have to wait to spoiler that i was like wow he's really he's really getting into this and uh, Brian Tyree Henry, always good. I mean, his his uh his character was a little bit different than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you. And then um, yeah, I like the whole modernized concept. I think Chris is right. I think it was interesting. I I actually think this remake was due because this needed a modern take on it. Uh, don't necessarily think we needed the remake, but for them to remake it the way they did, I think they did a pretty good job. And that's basically it for me on spoiler free section. So. We're going to give you guys three seconds. We're going to head into the spoiler section. So if you have not seen Child's Play, stop what you're doing. Go watch it, come back, or not, and you don't really care, that's fine too. So three seconds, and then you hear Chris will just start talking. Three, two, we don't have, We don't have to count. One. We're not, we're not counting. Take huh? off. This Is this a new thing? We're going to start counting? Maybe. Where are we taking off from? <laughs> from the spoiler oh, okay. free land okay. to the spoiler Lift off. land. <laughs> Okay, so first thing, like right off the bat, the thing I actually really liked, it's actually kind of funny, but it's actually believable at the same time, is the way that Chucky becomes Chucky. In the original, he is, his uses black, he, uh, well, Charles uses black magic. Yes, yes. To transfer his, his soul and, and mind pretty much into this doll. Yeah, because he's on he's on the run, he dies yes. in the toy store, yeah. Yes. And so Spoiler, you know, it's been a yeah. few years. Well it's been like thirty, 30 years. 30, yeah. <laughs> and the new one, these dolls and this is this is where it becomes believable, are are programmed. And there's somebody overseas programming them. So there's a disgruntled employee who is is being deemed as slacking off on the job and he's so mad at his employer so this is the believable part actually that he when he's programming the the chucky doll he decides to go in and remote and remove all of the safety features and then he ends up killing himself 
So this doll gets shipped out, this like crazy doll gets shipped out with the rest of them over to the U.S. And that is actually a believable thing because people get upset, especially at work. Yeah. And they do things that are not reasonable. And this can affect us because with today's technology, a lot of these dolls are are remote based, yeah. some of them, I some also these high-tech think, dolls. Are you sure that guy wanted to die? Because, you know, I think a lot of us saw Dwayne Johnson fall out of um, a Fast and Furious movie and land with uh, with uh, Chris Patrick. Hemsworth's wife uh, in real life. But that, that actress, and they landed on the, the car. Remember, he survived. So maybe he thought he would survive, Patrick, too. anyways. <laughs> so, like, that right there is how the two films are different. One doll will end up t- being possessed, in a sense. The other one, a and, and disgruntled employee, ends up remotely removing the safety hazards. So the interesting thing about this Chucky is this Chucky is modern because he is linked to... Um, apps in your apps phone. Apps in your and, phone. And, and, it's and like um, a, a system that everyone uses. Yes. Buddy. Or but no, no. No, I forgot what it's called. Oh, uh, it started with uh, Keslin. Keslin, Keslin. There you go. And so your 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 buddy doll is can, can re- kind of like Alexa in a sense can remote and it like can be your babysitter and watch your kid it can call cars it's it's very very interesting and very very modern because with technology i feel like this is where we're leading towards but instead it's a doll yes, <laughs> I, yes I would take exactly, alexa over exactly. the doll any day well, m- me too so i i think that's the, the part of the the film that really i guess in, intrigued me is like oh this is actually kind of believable you know what I mean? Like someone possessing their their soul into a doll is not as believable, but a doll that was programmed correctly and then causes mayhem, that is believable with today's technology because we are so reliant on so many things. Hmm. You don't believe that a that a that a soul and can be entrapped into a No. Well, wait till you see Prank Encounters later on Netflix oh here, gosh, and that's up. what's really giving me the but nightmare. <laughs> that was, I think, that, that was a thing that kind of piqued my interest with this, with this, with this film. It's like, huh, interesting. I kind of like that. Now, the fact that they changed the look of Chucky, it made sense for this. I, I would say this version of Chucky. Remember that movie with Amy Adams, Big Eyes? That's they t- they took the big eyes and put on Chucky's face. At first, I did not like the look of Chucky. I'm like, this looks really weird. But after you know going in through the part of the movie and they're they're teaching him how to make a scary face, you know, it it actually is pretty funny. Yeah, his his look is really weird. It is, but I wasn't but afraid I it. of him. That makes sense. You weren't you weren't as afraid of this Chucky, right? No, it's not, because not like the other one. It's probably because, like I said, the other Chucky had a serial killer in him. This one just, yes, this one was just yes. let off the reins of its exactly. like safe, like basically took the safety off. Yes, so it really isn't like yeah. So, um, the other thing I found interesting is the spelling of Buddy. Yeah. Instead of it being B U D D Y, it was B U D D I. <laughs> yeah. My Buddy. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be hit, man. But also, I think the thing that separates this one from the remake is we get to hear Mark Hamill sing this buddy song. Oh, and the yeah. funny thing is my is my Pat is my brother and Patrick were singing the song like the next day and the day of. And Pat said he's gonna wake me up in the middle of the night looking at me face to face and start singing that song to me. I don't remember the song, but I just remember how he'd be like, Hi Andy, will you be my buddy? Like it was so it was, weird. It was very, very it was very Hi, interesting, Carissa. and it You're also kind of reminded me of like how, every, how everyone's afraid that like robots are going to take over one day. Like that's what I feel like this movie kind of reminded me of. Yeah, did he say in the song? Yes, did he say in the song like "I'll be your friend to the end"? Or yeah, something? and it's like you're like thinking like Cat America or Cat America said it so much better in Winter Soldier. I'm with you to the end of the but line. But I mean, overall, like I like like so the beginning was a little rough for me. Like it was, it's kind of hard to believe that a 13 year old boy would want a doll for his birthday. But you know, his mom that is a true. single mom working, so it makes sense that they bring this doll in that doesn't work correctly. She you know gets it from her employer. She's like, I'm gonna give you an early birthday present. But I think the thing that also made it very interesting is andy is older he was a little boy in the first one right yeah and but the little boy from the first one was obsessed with with chucky buddy. yeah yes. buddy, whatever. buddy yeah buddy. there was a there was a cartoon or not cartoon like a tv show and yeah. pajamas it was geared more toward and kids. cereal so where this one was geared towards everybody like adults were fighting over yes it. and so i think i found interesting with andy being older is also andy is has a hearing problem. He has a hearing aid. And I like that 
kind of oh that's right yes th- yeah that aspect yeah for the i feel like that changes the story up because he could a little affect bit. the hearing aid yes. yeah because yes. he's you know he, he's modern he's come on it's interesting he's well, a hipster I mean, but killer. overall like it actually wasn't bad like i said i thought it was gonna be complete garbage i'm not gonna lie i i, I did i think it would be good and i actually walked out being like huh i kind of enjoyed that that actually wasn't bad all right, so a few things I want to go back to some of your review. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to cut you off because once once sorry. you start going, once you start going, I'm like, oh, she's she's got some good stuff going. The beginning of the film was rough for me because I just could not believe that this guy who's daydreaming, who's not really doing his job of of assembling, uh, Buddy, which is you know the Chucky dolls, yeah, to the point where I'm like, he looks like Ray in The Force Awakens, like daydreaming, and they're like, hey, wake up, get to work, and instead. Of just doing his job, and then hopefully, you know, he'll figure his way out in the galaxy. This guy just decides, screw that guy. I hate my boss. I'm going to take off the safety. There was a point I think in 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 the when he was taking off things about violent tendencies, and he removed the safety on that. Why are there violent tendencies in a child's doll? Yeah, like that to me made no sense. Like when Tony Stark put instant kill in Spider Man's. Suit in Homecoming, it was a funny gag because we were like, "Wow, Tony's going th- is it like taking all every precaution?" Which we later would see in Endgame what would happen. Mm-hmm. The difference between that is a hero might need some type of ability where he might have to kill. He doesn't want to because he's saving lives versus a doll whose sole purpose is to help turn on your lights or you a car or be or, your buddy or be your buddy. Why are there violent tendencies even <laughs> on there? So immediately I looked over at Chris and I knew in her mind, she's like, he's not liking this because I'm like, that was really stupid. Now I get the whole point, you know, there's some people out there, you know, they hate the job and they one day lose it. They go postal as we used to say. They used to say about male people that they would go postal. Okay. At first when you said that, I'm like, is he making like a post office joke? No, that's what people would say. Like, you know what I mean? So that part I understood, but I just thought that, that that's it. That's what why Chucky's on the loose because this guy had a, a bad day. And unlike Ray, haha, he decided, no, I'm not gonna be a Jedi. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ruin somebody else's life. I don't know why. That bothered me. So that to me was poorly you know, executed. I didn't think that was I don't think that was smart or witty. I'm like, you should have just done the, the voodoo and brought back Charles, <laughs> Charles, you know, you know, put the little soul into this doll. Because I just thought that was terrible. But the modern take where Chucky, you know, or Buddy can, you know, bring you a car and, you know, he can turn on your lights and, and he can learn things and, and, and adapt to you to make it efficient for you, whatever you want to do with your buddy thought that was awesome. That makes sense. Especially with the hearing aid. I forgot that he did affect the hearing aid at one point. Um, I thought Mark Hamill did a good job of bringing humor to Chucky. Like you were saying with the faces. Like the point where they're like, he can't even make a sinister face. It was just, he looked goofy. So I, I definitely like that. And I like Chucky's look. Like his eyes were so big to the point where I'm like, oh, he's creepy looking. Like he's somebody I would see in the dark. I would flip out. Well, I don't like dolls, so if, if I saw, like, a doll like yeah, that... Yeah, remember I, at uh, Mad Monster Party last year, you saw somebody with a Chucky doll who smiled at you. They were just carrying it around like you a baby, out, okay? Yeah. Who does that? But, uh, yeah, I just... That's just so strange that you would even have those type of features well, on the other a, thing I, a buddy. I, the other thing I found when you were talking, I thought of something, too. The thing I found interesting about this version of Chucky is his goal was to keep Andy safe at all costs. Or if anybody hurt Andy, not just physically... But emotionally, he would eliminate them. Yes. That, but he, but he didn't do it to be, you know, sinister or anything. He he did it because he truly thought this person's hurting my buddy, quote unquote. And I'll do anything for my buddy. Yes, and so I think that's also kind of like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Well, thank God that Chucky was not in Avengers Endgame, or yeah, I I don't have to say spoiler. Everyone's seen it, or Peggy would have died. <laughs> Peggy would have died or Bucky would have died or okay. even the Falcon would have died basically no but um I like the animatronic as I mentioned in my spoiler free section I love the animatronic because when he's doing the smile they could have easily CGI that face but they did it with the animatronic so it looked authentic I loved it because yeah. he looked so goofy I was just like I just I was like yeah he was trying to like and I'm like oh, I can't even do it and it was kind of it was kind of funny because I was like oh the, you know this is a, you know like Chucky does have some humor to him but the difference is the other one, you know, Charles was more of a was a smart ass versus this Chucky who's just I like, I'll do whatever for I my really friend. I think the thing I really kind of wanted, but I kind of like that they didn't do it, 
is I love Chucky's creepy laugh. Yes. And we did not get that in this one. Not really. We got a creepy song instead. Yeah. yeah so. But so at the same time, it's kind of like, even though I, I, I think that's how they, they, they're going to separate the two, I'm going to call them franchises. Um, but that was, that, I thought that was interesting because I was like, I wonder if they're going to, because Mark Hamill has a very creepy laugh when he does the Joker laugh. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was like, ooh, I wonder what it's going to sound like. Yeah, exactly. Now, talking about, like, the actual, like, Chucky killing, I thought how he killed uh, Andy's mom's deadbeat second life yeah. <laughs> boyfriend. Love that. And let me tell you something. With the modern take, it makes sense for Chucky to go to a far distance to kill this guy when we find out that he has uh, actual wife and kids. And I'm like, this guy's a piece of shit. But when he killed him, I'm like, oh, like, back in the day, you'd be like, how do you, how do you know how to get back? This one, it's like GPS. Yeah. Even though you could say, well, Charles knows the area. I'm like, yeah, but, I mean, GPS is more This one seems a little sleek. more believable for, for me. Again, I think this could happen one day, honestly. I mean, not that I wanted to, but, it, I mean, I think yeah, it's it Terminator. Um, <laughs> but I, I think the other thing that's also very interesting is the little subtle hints they use to kind of show you how Chucky picks up tendencies in the beginning after Andy gets his, his buddy, he's making himself a sandwich for school, but he's using like a knife. That, that was ridiculous. I'm like, what child uses a knife no uses to a make knife a like sandwich? That. It's just a peanut butter and jelly, bro. Like, why do you need that big old? I once cut my finger with a butter knife, so you think I'm going to pull how out a knife? How do you cut your finger with a butter <laughs> knife? I don't know. I didn't want to know. You Remember that one time, uh, Long, long time ago, you were calling me, you were coming home from work, and uh-huh. I was on the phone with you, and I was telling you I was cleaning the dishes, and I, I told you how I watched myself cut my finger and going, oh, I hurt myself, and you're like- Actually, you know what? I did cut my finger, not intentionally once. That was bad. Um, I cut it so deep, I needed stitches, but I'm a crybaby, and I wouldn't go, yeah. and it bled for like an hour. I finally got to stop bleeding, and then I went to work, and my boss made me go, and I, th- I still have some nerve damage from uh-huh. that. That but, hurt. But back to child's play. That's child's play, but not my cut finger. Don't use knives when cutting sandwiches. No, but but I like that subtle hint of when he put the knife down on the cutting board, he like stabbed it into the cutting board, and then you see Chucky's face go, oh, okay, interesting. Now, I also liked how the, the Andy, who was making friends with the people in his complex, how they watched an old horror movie and making fun of it and then seeing... They're watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, Oscar. there you go. Exactly. I, 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 I oh, was trying to... he can record you. He can record your voice. Yeah, so, That's but, a cool but, thing. But I thought it was, well, Not inter- really, was but real it interesting is. that he learned with the knife was watching Leatherface stabbing yes. people and then him kind of... And then taking the face. Yeah. And then he did it later to Andy's mom's boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> also, so pretty much this is like a smart AI doll... That's picking up all these tendencies, but unfortunately, since it, the programming was not right, yeah, it was set to kill. But uh, I would say that the first kill with the deadbeat boyfriend was cool. The ending with the whole helicopter thing, I just thought that was really stupid. I don't know why, just because I'm like, uh, I want to see more Chuck. Yeah, I know that he can use technology. The last thing I want to see is somebody getting their face cut up by a helicopter. Yeah. But also, um, this is going to be funny, but I don't know if this is a real Easter egg or not. Mm-hmm. But when him making faces, didn't that remind you of, of Small Soldiers? When... When Archer, when when he's trying to teach Archer of the Golga Knights to smile, remember? And he's trying to smile and he can't do it either. Sure. Yeah, Chris is like, you really love that damn movie. Yeah, that's what I thought was an Easter egg to it as well. But that is it for me on my spoiler uh, section. So we'll go to final thoughts and rating. Final thoughts, I mean, I think everyone should definitely check this movie out. Even though we kind of talked about pieces and scenes, we don't give you the full movie. Um, but overall, a very interesting interpretation and a modern twist on a classic horror film, I would say. Yes. I loved it. Oh, whoa, whoa. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I was like, whoa. I definitely want to see a franchise of this. I just think they need to flesh out a better a better part, a better, like, a better idea of why this is all happening. Not somebody, some guy having a messed up day and then activating the violent instant kill tendencies of, you know, this is a <laughs> Spider-Man, okay? You're not Tony Stark. But uh, I definitely want to see more of Mark Hamill as Chucky. Yeah. Not as good as the original. No. But, a, a, but not a, bad. A decent remake, considering that it it's had no hope. True. Yeah, a lot of people were like, oh, no, if they don't have the original creator or the voice, I'm out. So, I think it's solid entertainment. If you're looking for a horror movie that isn't going to fully disappoint you, then Child's Play might be the, one of the few horror films out there that's not going to disappoint you, I don't think. Yeah, I actually not think, bad. Yeah, just go in and have a good time. You want to have a good time and you want to see a different take on Chucky, this is it. So... Rating. Rating. Dun, dun, dun. I give it a 60. 60. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm a little bit more 
generous than you. I gave it a 67. Oh. So basically, I, I think that it's a solid, but it's not average. Like it, it's mm-hmm. just a little bit below, but it's because of the whole, just how it all starts. The guy has a, the guy's miserable. And why is Keslin having violent, like a violent feature on these dolls? That's strength. That's something we should be concerned about. Actually, it's po- it's not actually that concerning because I think a lot of things are like that, but we just don't know because we're not part of the programming. Yeah, but you should not be doing that to a child's doll. No, nah, well. And it's funny because I'm thinking about Booksmart as well. What would what, what would one of the girls from Booksmart use the doll for? <laughs> so yeah, it's just, yeah, I think it's I think it could be better, but I think at the end of the day, we both can agree that there's there's a possible franchise in the making there. Maybe. No, you don't. You're not even willing to go out on a limb on that. Okay, yeah. so definitely see One child's and play. One is good for me. Oh wow, definitely see child's play and hashtag TLC movies on your social media. And let us know what you think. You know, add us as well. I'm curious to know what people think of child's play. And that is it for movies. So we're gonna move over to one of our segments. And I think so. I'm like Pat. You don't even know your own thing. We're gonna take a stroll down Superheroes Alley, which is everything comics related, including comics, movies, TV, video games. This is real interesting because I cannot believe that this is actually happening. But a Django Unchained sequel is on the way. You know, it's going to be like, why is this in Superheroes Alley? It's a comic. Well, they did. All right. So, Quentin Tarantino right? made, a, made a sequel in the form of a comic series, which came out in 2013 from Dynamite Entertainment. It was a team up of Django, ver- uh, Django versus Django and Zorro. You know, you remember yeah, Zorro, right? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, they I teamed up. I think I saw that in comic stores. Yeah. Well, we should have picked it up because they are actually adapting that comic series as a sequel to Django Unchained. Oh, now, interesting. Now, the name Jared Carmichael, did that sound Jared familiar to you? Jared Carmichael. Probably not. No. Do you remember in mid-90s the security guard that they were messing with? He was also in Neighbors. They made a 3D print of his penis in Neighbors. No. Okay. Well, he's he is co- he's the one that's co-writing it. Okay. So, yeah. So, if you're... Yeah, it's hard to remember. He wasn't in mid-90s a lot. He was the one that was yelling at them to get, get, out, get out of the school, the security guard. He's a young guy, young guy. But anyways, he's co-writing this. Yeah, I, I was actually shocked to know that he's that he's the one that co the co this. I thought Quentin Tarantino would be the the first one that all right, he's going to work on it, right? So this is where it gets interesting. He's Dif- co-writing it with who? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Okay. Different outlets and their sources have a different idea of like kind of a perspective of what Quentin Tarantino's role in this is. Okay. Yeah. Some say that he will be the other co-writer. Some say that really? another writer will come in. Uh-huh. Some will also say that he'll just oversee it. So no one really has a oh. actual idea of what you know, Quentin Tarantino's that doing. That like changes everything, right? Yeah. So there's no other details. Not even an idea the of whether Django or not. Django Unchained was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. The 2012 film. Yeah. It. So yeah, we should for a flashback. What year did it come out? 2012. Shut up! No, because 2013 that long? was Wolf of Wall Street. I think the next year. Oh so, my god. We don't so know old. if he's. We don't know if Quentin Tarantino is going to direct this. And this was actually mentioned in the 2014 Sony hack in emails that they had discussed the possibility of this film. Mm. Now, let's get to the bread and butter here. What exactly is Django slash Zorro comic series about and why are they adapting it? This comic series takes place, like, I believe uh, several years after Django Unchained, the events that happened there. Now, Django is still a bounty hunter Mm -hmm. and there's still a warrant for his arrest. So he basically only works... On the East Coast, because the West Coast, he's he's dead meat if he goes there, because they're they're all trying to kill him over there. So you remember his wife Broomhilda, the one yes. that he had? yeah. Yes. So he got her all situated in Chicago, and he takes the road once again, and you know he sends her money, but basically he goes out and does jobs. Now he gets a lucky encounter with Diego de la Vega, which is Zorro. Oh, okay. And you know he is fascinated by Zorro to the point where he ends up becoming. Zoro's so bodyguard, and they team up to free uh, local indigenous people from slavery. So basically, Zoro joins in the fun, and we get a pretty cool team up. So this is what they're adapting from. Okay. Now, like I said earlier, uh, Quentin Tarantino actually co-wrote this uh, sequel in the form of a comic series with another uh, writer artist named Matt Wagner. So this is back in 2013. So this has been in the can for a while, the comic wise. So yeah. what do you think? Interesting. So he's still bounty hunting. Brunhilde is still in the picture, but he goes out on bounty hunts and he meets Zorro, ends up becoming Zorro's bodyguard. They actually call him by his name, which is, uh, I did not know, De- De- Diego De La Vega. I never actually called him that. I always called him Zorro. She's like yeah. looking around. We don't have a Zorro pop. No, we're just looking. What do you think? I, did you like Zorro? Now, I remember Zorro from I, Antonio you Banderas. Know what? I can't remember. It's been so long. I can tell you that I 
enjoyed. I think I saw the first one, the first Zoro in theaters. Thought that was really good. There's more than one Zoro. Yeah, there's two. Now the first one really good. The second one not very good. So it's been a while since we've seen Zoro on the big screen. Yeah. Now Quentin Tarantino's never truly made a sequel at all to his films. So this this comic series was like a big deal back when it came out. What do you think? Now that sounds interesting. Now I know you're shocked that the guy they got to co-write is somebody that that if I showed you the picture you'd be like, oh, I know that guy. But you're gonna be like, wow, this is, why is Quentin Tarantino not actually spearheading this? It sounds like he's just gonna have his name attached to it, some of yeah. that. But I feel like Django. I, I don't know why he would do that. I feel like he'd have to be involved. Django's a, one of his most popular films. It was really good. It was really good. Now my opinion, this is sounds Jamie awesome. Fox coming back. See that? Okay, boom. That's the big question. Would Jamie Foxx come back? Yeah, because. To me, I don't know if he. I, love Jamie I don't Fox. know if he would come back to this because they just recently he recently did a Robin Hood film that sounds very similar to this. Yeah. <laughs> so I I don't know. True. Not to say yeah, just because it, it, it's just a different take on a classic. So I actually am up for this because I think it'd be cool to see Jamie Fox has to come back as Django, but who do they get as Zorro? You know what I mean? Like, and they actually have the perfect guy in mind. Diego Luna would be the guy I would pick for Zorro. Huh? Chris is like, or actually. Pedro Pascal. How about oh, that? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I actually like the idea of them teaming up. Like, he's still bounty hunting, and then he meets Zoro, who's like a legend, and then they team up to free some people from slavery, which I think is just badass, which would go hand in hand with the first film. It would. Yeah, so I think this sounds awesome, but it all comes down to, Chris has said it, Jamie Foxx, is he coming back as Django, and what is Quinn Tarantino's role in this? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. You, you, you're you dead on. Are you inside my head right now? Uh, I don't know. Am I? Hi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't be weird i want to read the comic now because i didn't i was gonna you read don't it. remember seeing that in, in the comic i shop? saw it years ago and thinking maybe i should pick it up but i didn't at the time i didn't look close enough to know that quentin tarantino had co-wrote yeah it. So i and didn't know that part but if i, I would have known chris would have known if i would have saw that he had wrote that well oh, i better pick that up I, you know it'll be interesting to see what quentin tarantino does with a comic yeah but um what do you think about the comic storyline that's interesting yeah do you think they adapt that fully into this they might change it yeah, a little I bit. Yeah, I think they might change it as well. So, Jimmy Fox doesn't come back. What do we do? No. I don't know. Then I'm not as excited. Is there anybody else that you would cast as Zoro? Like, that comes to the top of your head? Like, Michael Pena? See him as Zoro? No. No? <laughs> do they bring back Antonio Banderas? Because he'd be an older Zoro. That would be interesting, oh, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, we might be getting paid. No, I'm just kidding. No, no we're not can you paid. imagine that? Can you imagine that? What a cool Easter egg that he's still Zoro in this universe that doesn't really tie in, but now it ties in. So Zoro from back in the 90s is still around. And Antonio Banderas still looks good. He looks fantastic. Preferably, if he got long hair again, he'd be even better. So, yeah, can you imagine Antonio Banderas and Jamie Foxx teaming up? That'd be cool, actually. Because we already got Keanu Reeves on the comeback. It's time for another, some, somebody from the 90s as well. Antonio Banderas, you're you're destined for a comeback. <laughs> Do you think that would blow people's minds if the, like, Antonio Banderas is returning as well? Yeah. And then Jamie Foxx is returning as Django. And then Quentin Tarantino's like, I'm I'm basically overseeing the project to make sure it's on track. I like to see Quentin Tarantino direct it. Oh, I, I doubt that. I doubt that. Because <laughs> he, he, I don't know if you know this, but Quentin Tarantino said he's going to retire after nine films. Wow. Yeah, so you could, could you? I, Quentin Tarantino is strange though. No, could it's you? True. Someone wrote this too. Could you imagine him retiring with this film? Yeah, no, so yeah, no. But I think that's cool. I think I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm up for Antonio Banderas coming back as Zorro. Yeah, I am teaching, actually teaching Jamie Fox Django some pretty badass things. So yes, yes, I actually think they should. Yes, look, yes, and yes. Yeah, I think they should look at the co-writer, which, and I think the artist, Matt Wagner, I think he also did the artwork. I'm not entirely sure that maybe they should get him involved as well, and that'd be pretty cool. I like if it's closer to the comics, because I feel like they did a good job, because I remember, yeah, Chris was right now, I'm thinking about it, I remember seeing it going, huh, but I didn't think of it as no. he wrote it, or if what happens if we would have known, we would have picked that thing up. Yeah. So now that number one's probably going to go skyrocketing now, but overall, I'm actually up for this. This is something different, and yeah, I'd be up for it. I always won the Django and Chain sequel anyway. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. So really, it was twenty twelve. Yeah, it was twenty twelve. So by the time this would come out, it'd be like ten years. So then, like, like imagine then a, a seasoned Django and then a legend Zorro, mm. Antonio Banderas. Yeah. I actually want Zorro to come back now. I'm like, yeah, bring Zorro back. Awesome, awesome, very happy. So we're gonna head out of the alley. So that that's just that. I'm I'm waiting for someone to be like, who's the hell is Antonio Banderas? And you're like, <laughs> oh shit. 
<laughs> so we're going to move over to trailers, and we recently reviewed a new trailer that's going to be a Netflix film coming out in just a couple weeks, I think July 12th. Mm-hmm. It's called Point Blank. I almost said Point Break. This stars Anthony Mackie, the Falcon, and then you have Frank Grillo, Crossbones. So Marvel Cinematic Universe people colliding for a new Netflix film. So at first, when we watched the trailer before it started, I'm like, ooh, Anthony Mackie, I am sold. Not even Frank Grillo. Not even. That's cool. Cool. I'll take Frank Grillo. Ooh, Anthony Mackie, I'm really? sold. What's wrong with Frank Grillo? I love Anthony Mackie. No Do you remember lo- how we met Anthony Mackie? I wouldn't yeah. let you hold him. Yeah, remember that time we met Frank Grillo? And we've never met Frank Grillo. Exactly, because the way you're acting, we're never going to meet him. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I like Frank Grillo, just Anthony, oh, shit, it's, just Anth- are, it's just Anthony Mackie. You were all bro. jacked up after the, the Purge films, you're like, oh, Frank Grillo's the man. He is badass. Do you remember him so, from Warrior? No, no. He was the trainer of Joel. Uh, uh, yes, uh, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Hey, look at that. Oh, wow. That so was I've been, a long I've been time on the grill oh train God, for a we while. We should watch that again. Yeah. That was really good. So, point Flashback blank. Flashback Cinema. Bro. Anthony Mackie, Frank okay, Grillo, so Netflix film. I, 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 okay, so before we watch anything, I'm like, huh. All right, I like these two actors, you know, Anthony Mackie. Um, I'm like, let's see what it is. It starts off very interesting. You see Anthony Mackie. He's in scrubs, looking sexy. And his wife is there. And then all of a sudden, someone comes in and knocks him out. And he wakes up and his wife is gone. I'm like, <gasps> She had no idea what this film was. So I had I already saw the trailer once. No. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to see what Christmas looks. And then it got a little cheesy from there. Yeah. It, it, I feel like it, it's... It's a straight up action flick. It's a straight up action flick, but it's not nothing we haven't seen before. Yeah, you made a good point on that. Um, You know, we're using someone to get someone out... We're going to hold the person you care hostage. They're going to team up now, the person you got to free up. Yeah. And, and then they're going to take down the, it, the person. Yeah. Right I mean, like, the action's there. The humor isn't... She did not She did not expect the humor. I did not either. I didn't laugh. The only one that got me was Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. That, he's like, that you know, was funny. He's, he's, like, like, he's like, I don't play video games. I'm he's an like, adult. Yeah, I'm a fucking adult. It's like, okay. You should play that because you have aggression issues. I like that, but overall... Overall, I didn't, like... Didn't I didn't want any more humor. I was kind of like, Patrick, what did I just watch? Like... <laughs> It's disappointing. It didn't wow me, and and I think no. when, I, I think when you use those two actors in the same sentence, Anthony Mackie and Fred Gillard, you're gonna be like, ooh, oh, oh, okay. I just wish that this film was a little bit more of like a, a little bit more original or fresh. I feel like yeah. I'm worried this is kind of like a like a retread of things that we've seen. And now I, I read that somewhere I don't know if this is entirely true. It's a remake of a foreign film, which also makes me cringe because Chris and I. Don't really care for remakes, especially even a foreign film. Untouchables, Upside. Miss Bala. Yeah, Miss Bala, exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. But I'm I'm here to see Anthony Mackie I mean, and Frank Grillo. That's what I'm here to it's see. It's going to be on Netflix. It's coming in October. No, uh, July. July. July 12th. Oh. She's all preparing. She's preparing. What did I see with that October then? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's the other movie we watched the trailer for. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. Oops. Whoops. So, okay, my bad. We watched two trailers. One we were not supposed to watch to discuss, but I just, wanted to just watch put anyways. It on, yeah. Um, uh, July twelfth. Yeah, I'm. Ex- I'm July still excited. 12th. Okay. I haven't seen a friend grill. I haven't seen friend grill in a while. Well, Endgame and Anthony Mackie. Yeah, yeah, I can't complain. Anytime I get to see Anthony Mackie Frank Grill on the screen, sign me up. Actually, Anthony Mackie was in the remake of Miss Bala, and it wasn't what I expected. Mm. But we didn't review that, did we? What? Miss Bala? I believe we did. Did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, we did. Maybe. Yeah, I it wasn't remember. title. It was an episode title. It was thrown okay, in with cool, someone cool, else. Cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. But, I mean, overall, Point like, blank. like I'm going to watch it. It's going to be on Netflix. I'm just not excited. Yeah, you know, after Chris was like, yeah, we kind of seen this before. I'm like, second, third viewing of watching that trail. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, but the humor is what throws me off because I kind of expected a little bit more of a. Like a I little bit, it more of like a witty, playful banter. Yeah, I also expected that this film would be a little bit smarter with the with the with the the concept of what the film would be like taking yeah. an old old like kind of an old retread of a, of a, like a premise and just being mm-hmm. like, okay, let's flip it up and make it a little bit more different. So yeah, I don't know. So July twelfth, we'll be checking out. Regardless, I'm there to watch those two, and that is it for trailers. Now we're gonna move over to something because they just keep putting out more and more reveals, and Chris and I are trying to catch up. So San Diego Comic-Con's Funko reveals are insane. To the point so we're, we're only tackling a few, and then we're going to tackle more in the next episode, and hopefully by there we're, we're caught up. Oh, yeah, right. They're going to drop more. Yeah, I think they're dropping like 75. Have we even got to 75? I don't know. That's what I heard. Someone said it was like 75. 75? Okay. This one so just dropped, This right? one just dropped, but I'm really excited, and I don't want to wait to talk about it. So 
Star Wars exclusives. Woo. We are getting two Star Wars exclusives. So, <laughs> they get all are, calm down. <laughs> they are chrome. Oh, man. People are probably sick of the chrome And they now. are green chrome. Yes, but it makes sense for these two. It does. So first up, we have Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. And he is pretty much... Patrick just got this one signed a couple of weeks ago. It's the, the same mold as the, same mold. Oh, the Star Wars Celebration chromes. Yes, so. it's just a green chrome. But this actually, in my opinion, looks better than the Star Wars Celebration Because one. he's green. Yes. Yes. What's the other one that's... That's going to shock everyone. I really want this one. Yoda. Yoda is green as well. Same as the Star Wars Celebration, just different color. Uh, I like these two chromes. I'm, I told Chris that once you're invested in the chromes, and especially because I love Star Wars, I'm getting these pops. Now, I have one gripe about these. That it's going to shock you. Mm. Probably not. There's not enough chrome. There's not enough Star Wars. It's just two pops. Well, if they're going for like a green thing, who like oh a Jabba the Hutt chrome, I that would have been cool. A I, green I Jabba have another the Hutt one too. Chrome. Since you decided to shoot first, Greedo. Greedo, Greedo, green that would have thrown people. That would have been really cool. I think Greedo would have looked better blue, though, like a blue chrome. Greedo's green. Is he green? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Oh my god, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling your Star Wars card right now. I like Star Wars. I'm not obsessed with Star Wars. It's a yeah, Greedo difference. and Jabba would have been fine. I'd rather have a Jabba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but those two would have been different. We had not seen them before. That would have made more enticing. So it doesn't say where Boba Fett's gonna go on the on the. Funko blog, it just says Yoda's FYE, so I don't know if they're both FYE. They might be both. I think they're both FYE. Hold on, I'm gonna look on, on Instagram. Yeah. Because I know well, somebody will have it. I was hoping for more Star Wars pop. I thought they would come out. Like I said, if they would have added a Jabba the Hutt and a Greedo, I would have been pretty excited about it. And then also, if we're really gonna talk about uh, like Chrome, what about this one? Oh, Boba Fett's going to Amazon. Oh, I just want some more green Chrome pops. That's all I'm saying. All I want is green Chrome pops. Is that so hard? I think there should be more Star Wars, but I'm disappointed there's not an, there's only two. This is ridiculous. That's enough. So next up for San Diego Comic Con, um, our friends collect this this line, but Conan. Conan always does like San Conan Diego. Conan O'Brien. Yeah, he always does one where he spoofs something else, right? So this one's different. This one is different. These are going to go to GameStop. We have Conan O'Brien cereal which super is, conan cereal right? which is team coco orange i want to try that um it looks like pretty much like fruit loops but orange i've always wanted to try out the fungo cereal is it good i don't know anybody if you have let us know the next one kind of reminds me Gotta of the batman the 8th the, the, the anniversary, anniversary box, batman yeah. boxes um it's going to be conan o'brien and he is all orange it's not a chrome it's just all orange. it's not chrome it's just orange that actually, I want. That was actually kind of cool. Yeah, I want that. So these would be at GameStop. Yeah, because you know, normally with Conan, he has like special pops that you have to enter the code, and I've never won. I even entered Chris, and I got pissed off. So next up, the Simpsons. Now Chris is gonna laugh because I don't remember these uh, Kang and Kodos. I know the aliens, I just don't remember them. Do you know when when Simpsons do those the, those Halloween special ones? He, he, vaguely, yes. Okay, well, so they pop over. Right? Yeah, so they're the aliens with the with the the space gun. And they have one eye. Are they always like, uh, like bitching about something? They're always like, yeah, kind of. I'm trying to remember these guys, but uh, the pops look fantastic. It's a two pack. This is going to be a GameStop shared exclusive. Do we have to get these. These look pretty cool. They're glow in the dark, so I kind of want them. I want to watch The Simpsons, and we're going to be getting on Disney Plus, remember? So I'll be able That's to rewatch right. thirty right. something years. Oh, I don't know if I can now do this that. one isn't really a Funko. But I want to go on a rant really quick. Yeah. So we get we're getting My Hero Academia Woo! skateboard. Are we saying it right? My Hero is it My Hero Academia? I like to say Academia. My Hero Academia. Academia, I, but doesn't I, I don't Academia sounds better to me? My Hero Academia, and I have to change it. Damn it! Whatever. So we're getting a skateboard from My Hero. From My Hero. Oh, come on. With Tokoyami. On the front of it, which is kind of cool. Dark, Dark Shadow. Shadow. Um, this one's kind of cool. I don't skateboard, so like this is what my hero gets. So this is my rant. This, this is, is why I'm bringing it up. Man. It's gonna be a game shop store exclusive, but I mean, I don't this want is it. the only my hero we're getting a fucking. Skateboard? Where's these? You know, everyone keeps talking about these rumored like these new pops. Where are they at? Because I'm Put waiting. Out, Funko. I'm tired of Dragon Ball Z. Like I get Dragon Ball Z is popular. But my hero's in, man. <laughs> I want more my hero. I don't want to have to like skate. <laughs> I'm gonna punch. I'm you. not happy with the that was that was horrible. So that was my quick little rant. 
Funko, please give us some My Hero Academia. Funkos, please. So next up are going to be comics and icons. Mm. So this Ooh. one's actually super cute. This is the comic version of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Now, growing up as a kid, I love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, before Harry Potter, before Charm. You're talking about I the Melissa this. Joan Hart? Yes, yeah. Yeah. So this one's actually you know, not is, even near that no, one. No, this yeah. is not. This is the comic version of Sabrina. Like the old school. Yeah. She looks, yeah. Like, she looks like she's bewitched. Style. Yes. Oh, I so, love so Bewitched. She, so this one is her just staying next to her, like, uh, her, her cauldron. Cauldron. With, mm-hmm. like, green stuff coming out. I want this. I know why people are not happy with the reveals, because a lot of this stuff is, like, older stuff where, like, people, you have to know. It's not, this is not the new Sabrina that's on that. No, this is like this yeah. like it's like so, a, like a fifties version. But a lot of, of people that are collecting and don't want the old stuff. Well, but I, I do. like it. I want this that. one's gonna be a hot topic exclusive. Yes, I want this one. Um I'm Ugh. gonna skip the next one because it's a five star. Well no, we're oh, talking about okay. all reveals, so So we have a five star Hellboy, Hellboy which not is gonna be the, a game It looks exclusive. cool. He has his gun in one hand and the sword in the other. Yeah, it's cool, but we want a pop. Yeah. Abe Sabian as well, basically, if you've seen Shape of Water, you it's know. A, no, I'm just kidding. It, this is Hellboy. No, but, like, people, oh. Abe Sabian's been, com- they compare oh. uh, Shape of Water. Okay. Yeah. But Abe like... Sabian, yeah, I love him. And Hellboy, he's getting a five star as well. I'm disappointed. Is there any more? Is this, is this, this so is Those are the two five stars. <gasps> What's this? I don't know what this is. Um, This is a pop icon. Um, If you love Hot Rods and Counterculture, uh, they're bringing out the Rat Fink gray chrome oh i don't know anything about that either it looks cool i don't though. know what rat frank is i don't know what rat but frank it's is pretty either. much this ugly looking rat that has a wrench and like an oil mit- can but it's a drink for him you have to admit and he's like a, a like a gross green chrome but you have to admit it looks really cool the chrome but then there's also a oh. dark gray chrome oh my god and then, and then a there's regular- a glow in the dark not chrome all right i i I don't. I have to look this up because I know it sounds familiar, but I want them just for the chromes. Yeah, I don't. I don't want these. Chris at is all. like, no. I don't the even only care. one for this one I want is Sabrina. So what's next? So from there, we'll stop at this one. <laughs> um, just because I want to save some for lot. the other one. There's a There's lot, a lot yeah. and I'm pretty sure there's gonna be more by the time we record again. Um, this is this. This one is actually really interesting. It's actually kind of cute, but I scary. Got it. This is one of my top five. So this is going to be a top pop seven. ad icon wow and this is a pez this is going to be a toy tokyo exclusive and it's peter pez so it's the pez person holding a pez dispenser of himself oh, and he's yeah. a clown what's his peter pez peter pez him holding himself reminds me of books more where the guy's wearing a t-shirt of him wearing a t-shirt <laughs> and then another one but no this looks really cool because of the detail of the clown i, I didn't, love do you know art. anything about peter pez you know i honestly no. don't i think if but, i was into pezes i would have more information but isn't it cool that he's hold- i actually like the pop pez. it kind of reminds me of like like a clown holding like a a like little like Rattle yeah. shaker, like yeah. shaker thing. But the detail is incredible. It is. It's super creepy this and super sure? adorable. Toy Tokyo. Oh, Toy Tokyo is getting my business. Toy Tokyo's all the, got all the good ones. So that and is, and that's it for now. That's it for San Diego. Yeah, uh, Peter Pez is number one on the list of that. So we are going to move over to our last segment, mm-hmm. my favorite segment personally. Mm-hmm. Take me to the outer rim. Now, recently. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I guess Donald Trump, they're they're looking to remove his star. You know, Good. a lot of people deface it. Oh, okay, so I'm not arguing with you on that. I'm not a Trump fan. Now, Mark Hamill made a suggestion on who should take over that place of when they were... They're hoping the I guess the... Remove it. Yeah, they want to remove it. I and guess throw the, in the garbage. The West L.A. County burn side. it. Oh, wow. Okay. So, he made a suggestion of... Carrie Fisher and a lot of fans <gasps> have gotten aboard on this. Yeah, Chris and I have talked but that about. That makes me sad. But we talked about we talked about Mark Hamill not getting a star. Remember, and I was upset. And then now we're gonna go back to talk about Carrie Fisher not getting a star. I she mean, has yet to I get was one. really happy when Selena got a star. But this kind of this kind of let me let me tell you what let me let no me, Selena okay. should have got a star. But there's other okay. people that shouldn't be getting it like immediately. Let me leave this in, please. Yeah, because like so I'm getting I, all into okay, this. Okay, so there's. I'm tying it in, okay? Okay. Yeah. So I was really happy when Selena, because she was my idol as a kid. Like I wanted to be Selena as a kid. Like I think if thanks, I think if I someone would ask me what's the movie that I've watched the m- most in my lifetime, it's Selena the biopic. Don't judge me. Um, but I got really excited when she got her star on the Walk of Fame. It made me. I was. I wanted to go, but I, I mean, obviously I live in Phoenix, so I couldn't go. 
Now, the, the, it's like a bittersweet moment. It's excited to finally see her on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because she died so young. But at the same time, the bitterness of that is she wasn't there to receive the plaque and have the ceremony. And this is where I was leading into Patrick Free Got All Crazy is it would be a bittersweet moment for Carrie Fisher because she's not there to receive it. But her daughter, but her, but, get out of my head. <laughs> but her daughter, Billy Lord, which I love, can receive the reward. The uh, reward the for reward, her. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's but essentially then you bring it, it is Hamill, a reward. George Lucas, Billy Williams, Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford, and then you bring out the new Star Wars. Belega, you know what I mean? But yes, Ridley. I I ship this hundred percent. I think Carrie Fisher deserves a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I think it would be a fitting touch to the princess. I, uh, the whole red carpet. I mean, the like a really cool Star Wars treatment. Like they should have like the stormtroopers escorting them. It'd just be really oh, cool. Oh man, I'm getting all teary eyed thinking yeah. about it. I honestly don't, and uh, it's not just being biased. Like, Chris was like, you know, I'm getting all crazy. Like, Selena just got hers recently. Mark Hamill, Stan Lee got his uh, just a couple, just recently, like, less than two years ago. But then Why, people like Chris Pratt. Yeah, I, I love Chris Pratt. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, these people should shared. begin a star over him for now because of w- the body of work they left. Yeah. Not to say that Chris Pratt doesn't, I mean, who doesn't love Guardians? Come on here, man. That dancing sequence in the first but one. But you're comparing. Guardians to a forty-year-old. But you have to. But you said this love. to me that the reason why is because they have to. Well, one, you have to pay it's for politics. Your, you, have to you have to pay for it. You have and you to want to be relevant. Voted. You have to. Yes, relevant. Yeah, if they yes, just gave yada, everyone. Yada, yada, you know, yada, whatever. But uh, I'm with Mark Hamill, and I'm glad that the that you know these fans, the Star Wars fans, are, are joining on this. We should all just get together to get this done. Agreed. So yes, here, here. Carrie Fisher needs a star. This is ridiculous, and that is it for Take Me to the Outer Room. So this is the end of the episode. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This weekend we are going to be in Seattle, Washington What's for right? Ace Comic Con Seattle. Or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot. At the Wamu Theater. In Seattle, Washington. In Seattle, Washington. We're going to have as well. We are. So. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you. And to- that is going to be June 28th, 29th, and 30th. Yeah, so by the time you hear this, it'll be a day before. So get your tickets. That, that as soon as you hear it, buy your tickets and then get that late flight to get over there and you can come see us. Free buttons and stickers. Free buttons and stickers. And with that, this is the end of the episode. Chris, I want to go do something real quick, so I will wrap this up. Thank you for listening. If this is your first time tuning in, please subscribe. We're available on every platform, including YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple, iHeartRadio, and many more. If you've been on this journey with us before, thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. And of course, if you want free buttons and stickers, it's free, people. Definitely get at us at social media, TOC Movies on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, or Tomorrow Comes Movies on Facebook. Definitely give us a like, or you can email us at tocmovies at gmail.com, and we will get you those stickers, and definitely follow us on social media, as I just mentioned. And we also do a YouTube channel, so definitely subscribe, youtube.com slash Tomorrow Comes Movies. We do interviews, Funkos, our podcast episodes are on there, as I said, and much more. If you're looking for our main hub where you can find out where we're going to be at our next conventions, where to find all the links to our social media episodes, Funko videos, go to our main hub at tocmovies.com. And we do ask, please give us a rating, or I mean a review on any streaming platform for our podcast. Star rating of your choosing and just write something. Those are the ones that count. We really appreciate it. Oh, here comes Krissa. Yeah. Let's talk about some places that we buy from and that we recommend to pick up your Funko Pops from, especially if you're buying online. So let's talk about sick pops and collectibles which is our favorite pop story right chris that is true now he's got a really cool thing going on right now with us is he has a promo code called promo code yes excuse me tcm10 now what can you do with that promo code you can save 10 percent off of your order off for pre-orders and commons yes now really cool thing that we were uh chatting up with him at the time was he had some pops recently that that didn't come in the greatest condition he was saying that he's got to wait for another shipment so that his uh so he could send these off to people pre-order them that's what i like to hear Mm -hmm. is that he's not just shipping off pops that are in damage yeah he's going to give you quality mint pops so definitely use the promo code tcm10 on any pre-orders or common uh pops and you're going to get a good deal and you're going to get pops in the right way that i think all of us want good mint condition where can they go to pre-order uh you have to go to sick pops which is s i c c p o p s o c dot com sickpops o c dot com. Now, good thing that you did this last time. We were doing this, and I forgot to tell you to spell it. 
Because most people, if you do sick, it's going to be S-I-C-K. Yes. Yeah, so make sure you don't make that mistake. Go to S-I-C-C-P-O-P-S-O-C.com and pre-order or pick up some common pops. And if you're in the area, you can also do in-store pickup, I mm-hmm. believe. But you can also save 10% on all pre-orders and commons by using the promo code TCM10. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're looking for a, another place where if you're looking for some in-stock items, yes. Shumi Store, you can also use our promo code, which is uh, TOC Movies. Save 10% on your order. Yeah. I think this is applied to exclusives. I think the only thing it does not apply to is their pop protectors. Yeah. But that already comes with free shipping, so you can't double dip. Yeah, so... Using our promo code at shumistore.com, which is S H U M I store.com. S H U M I store.com. And that one, that code applies to pre orders, commons, and in stock items. And another place which we just recently got, we're kind of networking with here, is Seven Bucks a Pop. Now they have their famous pop shields. Now, if people are looking to get, you know, pop protectors, like for instance, Chris and I go through several different places for pop protectors. But this one, the Pop Shields, which we've tried recently, mm-hmm. you can get a lot of them. It all depends. But use the link in our description because uh, that's the only way it works. Use the link in our description to get that one. I believe it's also free shipping in the U.S. as well. And that is it. As always, your hosts are the Patrick and... Carissa. Chucky is the Joker's best buddy. Episode 93. Until next time, stay tuned for another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies. listening guys uh this is kyle phillips i hope you enjoyed and uh hope you do more stuff with tomorrow comes movies